You would agree that the world has changed significantly since the 50s when I was growing up in colonial Sierra Leone. I lived in the capital where I spent my holidays visiting my grand aunt who lived in the village on the outskirts of the capital. This was the means of lighting that we had when night fell. From these rudimentary means of lighting, nights were dark. I remember how I dreamt that people living outside the capital could also have access to electricity to light up after dark. As a child, I figured that these people had a right to benefit from electricity access. You see, a lot has changed since the 50s. Electricity is not just about access to light. Electricity is about access to internet, to technology, to education, to work, and for health and general well-being. Should access to electricity be declared a human right? Today in the developed world, we cannot imagine life without electricity. A study conducted by the World Net Daily looked into the overall preparedness level of the American public. What they found is pretty troubling. Almost 50% of people who were polled said they would not be able to survive for more than two weeks without electricity. 75% of them said they would be dead within two months. Power outages in the developed countries, most recently in Texas and California, are headlines in the international press. And yet, 789 million people are living without access to electricity. And hundreds of millions more only have access to very limited and unreliable electricity. Sub-Saharan Africa has the worst access to electricity, as the World Bank map shows. I have lived in both developed and developing countries, and I know exactly what this means. The COVID crisis has reminded us, in no uncertain terms, of the indispensable role played by electricity today and provide insights into how the role is set to expand and evolve in the years and decades ahead. The millions of people now confined to their homes depend on electricity to work, to school, to shop, to entertain, and to communicate. A reliable electricity supply is required for all these services, as well as for powering the devices most of us take for granted, such as fridges, washing machines, and light bulbs. In addition, electricity is needed for hospitals, for operating medical equipment, as well as to ensure the timely communication of important information between governments and citizens and between doctors and patients. One can only imagine what this means in sub-Saharan Africa, where only an estimated 28% of health facilities have access to reliable electricity. The COVID experience illustrates clearly how vital electricity is for the fulfillment of the right to work, the right to education, and most importantly, to the right to physical and mental health as well as to the right of freedom of expression through modern technology. In some cases, even the basic human right, the right to life, will be compromised. In the developed world, we do not even have to think about electricity access, and we take it for granted. But let us for one moment stop to consider the people living in the lighter area of the World Bank map steps to ensure that disadvantaged people do not have their human rights compromised during and after COVID crisis should include prioritizing electricity solutions to power health clinics and first responders, keeping vulnerable consumers connected and increasing reliable, uninterrupted and sufficient electricity production in preparation for a more sustained economic recovery. Simply put, under the prevailing situation that exists in the world today, the denial of access to electricity is a human rights abuse. 
something needs to be done and fast. The United Nations has well established human rights, many of which are contained in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which was adopted by the United Nations General Assembly in 1948. And in the two covenants on civil, political, economic, social, and cultural rights of 1966. These rights include inter alia the rights to life, freedom of expression, health, food, water, housing, culture, development, prof property and home, and private life, have contributed and they have contributed to the well being of people worldwide. But the world has changed things, and human rights need to be viewed in the light of current realities. We need to think outside the box. Throughout my career at the United Nations, I have promoted access to electricity in humanitarian situations and in development activities. I later had the opportunity to represent my country, Sierra Leone, for six years at the Human Rights Council. At the Human Rights Council, I participated in the reviews of the human rights situation in over 90 countries from all over the world. From these reviews, one could see clearly that the countries that have failed in making progress towards the realization of the economic and social rights of, the, of their peoples were countries with low access to electricity. In addition, given the fact that development in technology have made it possible to address even the political and civil rights through the use of electricity supply. For instance, to power mobile communications, the full realization of these rights will also be found wanting without access to electricity. After my retirement, I was appointed as by the Human Rights Council to lead a team to hold consultation and advise the council on steps to take to enhance its role in preventing human rights violations. One of our recommendations is that the council needs to pay greater attention to the implementation of recommendations made to member states in country reviews. When this is done, it will be evident that access to electricity is a major reason why human rights are being violated and that the council has a role to play in ensuring that such access is not denied. For the, from the foregoing, it is clear to me that access to electricity is an overarching human right. And yet, there are solutions to provide electricity to the most remote corners of the world. And to illustrate this, I will go back to where I started. This is a solar lantern being mass produced in Sierra Leone by illiterate women who are trained to produce solar lanterns for use in remote areas with no access to grid electricity. This is to show that the potential of renewable energy to provide much needed solutions. Indeed, when I worked as energy policy advisor in Sierra Leone, I initiated solar energy solutions to power health clinics, schools, and community centers in remote areas, as well as the installation of solar streetlights to provide security in the major towns and cities at night. But progress has been slow, even in my own country. What is needed to accelerate access is declaring electricity as a human right and making governments responsible and accountable for the lack of comprehensive efforts to ensure such access. Some people have expressed concern that access to electricity to meet the needs of all would lead to greater use of fossil fuels with the potential to increase emissions of carbon dioxide and pollution. I find this argument hypo hypocritical if it is made by those who consider themselves champions of human rights and who benefit from access to electricity in their own countries. Yes, we need to maintain a safe environment, but we also need to ensure that the rights of all are respected. This, the response should therefore be to promote electricity production by using renewables. This would involve intensifying research that would lower the cost of electricity production from renewable sources 
and providing assistance to poor countries to exploit the renewable energy sources that are available to them. And another argument could be that there are plans underway to increase electricity supply in sub-Saharan Africa. And every day one hears of new financing that are supposed to be made available for improving electricity access. But implementation of such plans is moving at snail pace. Meanwhile, poor people will continue to suffer and some will even lose their lives due to lack of electricity access. The whole world should be concerned about this. So what do I think should happen now? Let me start by saying that there had been a general reluctance to bring energy in general and electricity in particular into the, into the debate at the United Nations. And it was only in 2015, after years of lobbying and persuasion, that recognition was given to energy in the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda. Indeed, Sustainable Development Goal is ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for all, with one of the targets as having universal access to electricity by 2030. However, this is a target. And according to the UN, at the current rate of progress, a projected 620 million people would still lack access to electricity in 2030. This estimate does not even take into account the disruptions caused by COVID. Yes, 620 million people mainly in developing countries in general, and sub-Saharan Africa in particular, will have their human rights continue to be abused due to lack of access to electricity. The 2030 Sustainable Development Goals promise that no one should be left behind. But as the facts show, sub-Saharan Africa will be left behind, or this being left even further behind in the world in which Technological advancements make access to electricity indispensable for progress. Even in developed countries, recent events have demonstrated there's a, that there's a need to ascertain the, reliable, the reliability of electricity supplies in order to ensure that there is no deprivation of human rights, even if temporarily, as this could result in undue suffering and unnecessary loss of life. This is unacceptable. The international community needs to do much better. In conclusion, I would like to refer to a statement by the former Secretary General of the United Nations, Ban Ki-moon, which adequately defines the role of the Human Rights Council. All victims of human rights abuses should be able to look up to the Human Rights Council as a forum and springboard for action. Responsibility for, def for defining human rights lies with the United Nations General Assembly, usual, usually at the advice of the Human Rights Council, where all member states as well as non-governmental organizations and civil society at large participate. Civil society has historically been the impetus for change at the United Nations. The initial action for this change should emanate from the grassroots, those who are victims of lack of access to electricity and who suffer the most. These are the people who are struggling to realize their human, basic human rights from day to day. A call to action would require increased advocacy at all levels to ensure that access to electricity is declared a bona fide human right. Once this is done, all mechanisms of the United Nations systems would need to act. It would then be incumbent on the individual United Nations member states and the international community at large to give access to electricity the attention it deserves.